Here you can see my freely programmable double edge bridge. As you can read on top, it is a demo board with which I would like to demonstrate the functionality of various motor drivers. I will start the small video series with a presentation of some details of the circuit board. I will also explain the changes made to the layout because after the first tests I had a few ideas about what can be done better. I have already published a video on the design and assembly of the PCB on my second project, how open is this gadget? Controlling a stepper motor works as intended, but since I didn't just want to show what can be done, but also explain how it works, the circuit board layout wasn't perfect. So let's take a look at the changes I implemented after my first tests. Across the resistor that is implemented as a current sensor, a voltage drop of significantly less than 5 volts occurs in normal operation. Something the ATmega 328 microcontroller can handle without any problems. A tiny electric motor is driven here with which a voltage drop of 2.2V can be measured across the 30 ohms resistor, which corresponds to a current of 73mA. However, I would also like to use the board to demonstrate cases that are outside of the normal operating states, at which up to the full supply voltage which is a little over 7 volts here might drop across the resistor. Since the microcontroller would be destroyed if this voltage was applied to a GPIO, I soldered a 4.5V Sena diode and two more resistors to each of the two current sensors on the back of the board. I had to cut the tracks running from the current sensor directly to the microcontroller on top of the board. Two cables on the button side now lead from the Z diodes to the two analog inputs. Another change addresses the control pins of the transistors. Since not all microcontroller pins have hardware pulls with support, I swapped two of these output pins which makes programming much easier. Again, I had to cut through the tracks on the circuit board... ...and reconnect the pins on the bottom side with two more wires. Then I found cheap mini voltmeters on the internet and quickly came up with the idea of installing them on the circuit board as well. To hide their wire routing, I drilled three holes in the board. Each of the mini voltmeters is fed with electrical energy by a battery, independently of the edge bridge supply voltage. One battery for all voltmeters will not work because in doing so, short circuits would be caused on the board. The bottom side of the PCB no longer looks as tidy and professional as the top, this is where the tinkerer in me comes back to daylight. I had originally connected the red LEDs used for displaying the switched off status in parallel to the source drain path of the transistors, which worked well. However, after implementing the mini voltmeters, this turned out to be disadvantageous, since a small current always flows through the sensor and so the lower voltmeter never goes to zero. Also, the LEDs can be disconnected by jumper, this solution did not seem optimal to me for pedagogical reasons. The LEDs are therefore now connected to the input side of the transistors and, as intended, the current sensor now shows no current flow as long as there is no load connected to the H bridge. A current only flows through the sensor whenever the motor is switched on. I implemented these and some more changes with KiCad in version 1.1 of the PCB, so if you want to make a copy of the demo board, it is easier for you to do so. As told before, it is a freely programmable motor driver based on an ATmega 328P. I took this from my Arduino Uno and put it on the socket of the board. So that the microcontroller can still be programmed via the Uno board without having to swap the chip between the Uno board and the PCB, I joined pin 0, 1, reset and ground with a 4 pin connector. 
If these pins are connected to the UNO board, the microcontroller can be programmed and data can be exchanged via the USB interface. With the demo board I would like to dive deeper into coding and show that you can use the digital write command to literally move something instead of just making an LED blink. The many LEDs on the PCB are not required for the function of the H bridges but serve to visualize the switching states of the transistors. The yellow LEDs indicate the states of the 8 GPIOs of the microcontroller that are switched as outputs. If the relevant pin is at high level, the connected LED lights up. Next to the 8 power transistors, there is a green and a red LED. If the relevant transistor is switched on, the green LED lights up, if the transistor is switched off, the red one lights up. All LEDs can be disconnected from the circuit by jumpers. On the left edge bridge you can see the mini voltmeters that are connected in parallel to the four transistors and thus measure the voltage drop across these components. As already shown, the fifth voltmeter measures the voltage drop across a resistor that serves as current sensor. I did not connect any voltmeter to the right edge bridge because every measurement also has an influence on the circuit to be measured as I will show in later videos in this series. Here the board is fed with power via a lithium battery and a step up converter. Input voltages between 5 and as shown here, 12 volts work without any problems. That's all about the demo circuit board for now. Further information as well as the design files of the PCB are available on the project page homofaziens.de. In the next video of this series, I will use the board to demonstrate how half bridges work. And if you would like to support me in my efforts to create freely accessible knowledge about electronics and software, you are welcome to click the donate button on my pages. Many thanks to all the great people who already sent me an Opel. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.